Coming up, the Knife Junkie Gentleman Junkie Giveaway Knife. That's a Kaiser Sliver. We're going to be taking a look at Kershaw putting Magna Cut in the leak. And then beautiful handmade knives by Knife Junkie Podcast guests. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I have a, a couple of favorite comments from this past week. Um, this first one is obviously from a, a German uh, person. I've known a lot of Germans in my life. We had a lot of uh, exchange students growing up, and I went over there a bit. And uh, my German is pretty rusty, but it was cool. This is a very typically direct German individual, and I like this. This was on the very embarrassing video where I have the Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie, and I throw up a piece of paper and try and slice it in the air. It takes a couple of attempts, and then I get it. But he says, Du magst das falsch. Du musst das Papier halten und langsam durchschneiden, nur so seicht man die Schärfe. Okay? And he's saying, you're doing it wrong. You have to hold the paper and then slowly slice through the paper so someone can see, so you can demonstrate how sharp the knife is. Okay? And I, I don't know why, it tickled me. I love it. Okay, I'm going to do that. Uh, but I'm also going to try and cut it in the air, too, because that's a lot of fun. Uh, vielen Dank. Uh, SD Survivor 72. Um, I This also tickles me because we're going to Germany soon uh, to visit some family, and I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. I get to bust out my Deutsch and, uh, and eat my way across Germany. All right, and next up, um, on the Bad Knife Names, uh, Thursday Night Knives, we had a whole topic on Bad Knife Names, of which uh, there are many. Uh, this is K. Uh, I'm sorry, Kaido, K uh, X Kaido. And he says, there are a lot of unwise or cringy model names. The Microtech, Microtech Death on Contact, that's that's a huge one. And the Jeff Vandermeulen Double Homicide, uh, which is a very cool knife, but man, that's a terrible name. And the many, many Reaper names out there. Also, the John Gray Slut and many of the Tops knives. I love the John Gray slut. I don't know why. Just cracks me up. All right. Coming up, uh, let's get to a pocket check. Today in my front right pocket, I had the Synergy. I absolutely love this. That's the Synergy 4 from Civivi. Um, and it's based on the Jimmo Young, well, is the Jimmo Young design that we first saw in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, but done to the nines by Civivi. Uh, I love this uh, G10 with the radial uh, circular patterns coming from the pivot, has great grip, and then that Nitro V blade, four inches in length, beautiful, beautiful uh, Tonto. I love it. It's got a uh, considerable belly and a nice upsweep. And yet that point is right down the center line of that knife. So a beautiful knife. I've been considering getting the gray version of this with the um, upswept blade, the non-Tonto upswept blade. That is also a very fetching uh, design, but uh, very ergonomic. And I got to say, beautiful looking. Um, next up in my front right pocket, this is where I've been carrying the slip joints lately because of the phone. The phone goes in the front left radiating my goodies right there okay so i have the ohio river jack here from c reisner cutlery um traditional pocket knives is the is the place where you can buy these c reisner cutlery um is a, a brand of knife that has been um well a brand of knife uh, owned and designed by um austin of C. Reisner Cutlery, whose grandfather was C. Reisner, Carl Reisner, who started the company in the first place. He sells it through traditional pocket knives. And uh, there are a number of these left. You can still get these, even though the Lake Champlain Barlow is now the new release, and that's been getting a lot of press. Uh, Austin is sending me one graciously. I, God, I can't wait to get that. That is, But you've seen a lot of other uh, knife fluencers out there talking about the Lake uh, Champlain Barlow. Uh, named after the aircraft carrier Lake Champlain that uh, 
Carl Reisner of C. Reisner uh, Cutlery served on back in World War II. So kind of a, well, a very cool uh, naming and a very cool, um, what am I trying to say, thematic sort of attachment uh, to the personal aspect of the designer. Uh, all that said, this is a great knife. It's got a very strong back spring, so really good walk and talk, and very confident in hand that that thing is not going to close. Uh, even if you exert some pressure with the thumb while cutting down, you're still going to be receiving force in the opposite direction. This thing is not going to uh, close on you or anything like that. And while it's not closing on you and doing an awesome job cutting with that M390 blade, it's going to be looking damn good with that Perfect. I, I love the canvas micarta QSP is using on this. It is so even and uh, on both sides, so even in terms of how much dye there is compared to how much epoxy there is. Sometimes too much epoxy makes uh, makes micarta look gray and you don't get that at all in this. It feels great. It cuts great. I'm a big fan of the Ohio River Jack. OK, next up in my waistband, now that it's fall and I can start carrying little bit larger uh, fixed blade knives. I got my um, hog tooth knives ruffian in the waistband today, but um, this does require a three o'clock uh, carry in the waistband. Uh, I've moved everything up front to that appendix carry, but this is probably the largest EDC I carry uh, fixed blade. It's definitely the largest. And uh, pardon me, I'm coming down. Well, I've already gotten under the weather so i'm sick as a dog right now so you have to excuse that but uh this is the biggest edc uh i carry and like i said it's got to go over here in the three o'clock position otherwise up here it's stabbing into all sorts of stuff i don't want it to jam into so uh but just a great knife 154 cm matt chase um he is a journeyman smith but in my eyes he's a master uh, he does just beautiful, beautiful work. And the uh, knives like this and the Nova 1 and the EDC Tonto by him are water jetted 154 cm. And then he does everything else. Um, and then the fancy pants knives he makes are all forged uh, from the start. So he's been making knives for 30 years, 32 years. And, uh, and he's younger than I am. And <laughs> the stuff he's making is just incredible. I, I hope... Uh, I hope for a long, long, long career for Matt Chase, because that means I will have many, many, many of his knives in the future. OK, and then last up for emotional support, an odd one, not odd, but just one I haven't carried in a long time. Yep. Your eyes serve you right. I had the Griptilian, the Benchmade Griptilian on me uh, just on a lark. And this is a great knife. Kind of forget about it because I like to dish on Benchmade and all the many bad decisions they've made over the years. But the Griptilian was a great decision and a great knife. However, uh, the handle was a little too short, a little too light, a little too cheap feeling for me. And uh, the 154 CM blade is just so exquisite on the Griptilian. Um, I, and, and I would imagine no matter what flavor you get, but this is just the standard. Uh, I think I got this at REI years ago. Um, but I got the advanced weapons technology um, handles on it. Really, really nice aluminum anodized handles awt um started out making they make things for long range shooting uh rifles and stuff like that but they veered into um machining parts for uh, handles for various bench made knives and uh this one is awesome i i like to say that this uh, these scales saved the griptilian in my eyes so this is what i had on me today what did you carry drop it down below I, I actually like the look of this right now we got the civivi synergy 4 we got the ohio river jack the ruffian from um hog tooth knives and the benchmade griptilian i like the size differential between all four of those let me know what you had on you and uh, drop it in the comments below okay well here's a knife that i cut here wait let me close this so you can hear it this is the ohio river jack such a great walk and talk. Uh, a knife that I kind of wish were a part of my collection and could have been if I were a little more crafty about it, uh, but I shouldn't, uh, is a knife that was donated to the channel by Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Yes, it is the beautiful Kaiser Sliver. I love this knife. Putting it under the knife cam here. This is an aluminum handled, fluted, radial fluted aluminum handle, contoured, you look at it in cross section it's curved this way contoured 
very, very nicely. And um, and you have an S35 VN blade. Again, uh, not again, but I mention this every time I bring out this blade. It reminds me of a Pesh Cobbs blade. You got a slight recurve, a slight downward um, angle, but you still have a belly and that point is just below center line. So you're going to get great utility use out of this. That's a hollow ground blade, by the way, slicey as the day is long. You're going to get a lot of uh, utility use out of this, but it's also, I don't know, just incredibly uh, good looking. Look at look at this line down here where the fingers wrap around the handle and how it continues straight and then dips down ever so slightly when you get towards the tip of the blade. Um, this thing is just meant for work. And I got to say, it would be a great self-defense knife if you needed it to be so. Because of that downward angle, you'd get accelerated slashes. You got a point in a great place, especially for a reverse grip, thrusting, uh, jabbing, and stuff like that. But also, you have this fluted handle, which is going to keep it in your hand uh, nicely. So this, oh, and it's also on washers. So you get that lush hydraulic feel. It's really nice. I, I want people to go back to washers a little more. I like the drop shut action. But man, let's not be Johnny One Note with our action here. I, I do think we need to pay some attention to the washers again. Okay, so this is the October Knife Junkie Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife, Kaiser Sliver, as I mentioned. And uh, this will be on October 19th. We'll be giving this away. So uh, do tune in. All right. So we are, uh, if you are interested in that, um, you do have to be a part of us on Patreon. Quickest way to do that is go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You can scan that QR code on the screen. But really what you're doing is you're helping support the show. And you're also getting exclusive interview extras and um, some other things. And then you're getting it injected into the knife giveaway contest. So uh, do go check us out on Patreon, if not just to assuage your curiosity and find out what we're all about there. Okay, coming up, we're going to take a look at some Knife Life news right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Chris Reeve Small Sabenza 31, left-handed with double silver lugs, in stock while supplies last. These featured the drop point blade in Magna Cut. The Lil Muck from LT Wright packs a punch with a flat ground O1 blade. The ergonomic handle provides a nice grip with multiple handle options to choose from. And the Bark River Knives. Bravo Strike Force 2 is back with a brand new production run. This stylish 3V blade has a slight recurve and Bark River's signature convex grind. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Reading that liner was AI Jim. That was very cool to hear. Uh, I think we should do that from now on. I like it. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Kershaw leak. It's a knife we all know and love. Came out in the year 2000. So it's been around for 23 years. Uh, the Kershaw leak is now coming out in a special edition. And they've done this many times, special editions. But this one is in Magna Cut, just like every other knife. And I'm not dishing. I think it's awesome. I wish all of my knives were in Magna Cut at this point, except for my 154 CM knives. Anyway, so they have a comic book, an in-house comic book series called The Edge at Kershaw. And so this knife is to um, commemorate that. I'm sure there are a lot of Kershaw nerds out there who know exactly what this is all about. I myself do not. But I got to say, um, I gave my Kershaw leak to my wife, so it's still in house, but it's not really mine. And seeing this one, I'm just loving the leak. Look at that blade. What a beautiful blade. Uh, Warncliffe usefulness long before Warncliffe's were uh, in vogue. Anyway, so this uh, this leak is a tribute to the edge. And um, this is a comic book made by Joe Zavaletta. I thought I would mention just because... Uh, you make a comic book, you should be acknowledged for it. Uh, the knife comes with a book. It's a compendium of all five episodes of the Edge comic book series. And it's available now directly and exclusively from Kershaw. So you want that leak of yours in Magna Cut, go check it out. By the way, I also like that gunmetal gray anodization on the handle. Uh, 
Next up from another stalwart brand, this time CRKT. They are collaborating with Daryl Caston of D-Rocket Designs. Uh, we know him for his very retro-futuristic designs, sort of 50s, 60s ideas of what the future would be. And we see that uh, um, in the design language of Daryl's knives. He, um, he also frequently adds uh, very unique ways of deploying or locking up a blade, which is all, also exciting. <coughs> Pardon me. Here we have the new Mbombo. Mbombo. M-B-O-M-B-O. -M -B -O. Mbombo. Um, I don't know. It sounds African or, um, in my experience, Fijian. The Fijians uh, in the Fiji language, they put the M before the B a lot. Mbombo. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. It's a very random fact. I'm not that effete. Uh, the D-Rocket retro futuristic design here has a... Uh, an inline flipper tab. So when it's closed, it does not protrude from the design at all. And you just pull it back, kind of like those early mods on the Boker Burnley Quaken, where you just carve away a little bit at the top of that bolster, and it gives you a spot on the tang to grip. Um, the stylized Tonto is very fetching to me. You got this big giant fuller down the middle, and then you have a nearly 90 degree angle uh, with the curve. Uh, coming off there. So you've got a sharp front and a sharp bottom. Um, that's kind of how it, it pans out. Damascus blade steel, which we don't see often from or ever from CRKT, and uh, a, a titanium body. It's a frame lock, uh, this one. This is going to release the week of Blade Show West. That's uh, next week for, for this recording, next weekend, October 13th and 14th, 2023. Uh, I like what CRKT is doing to to class up their lineup. Um, I think uh, their very first one, the Icoma, uh, with the with the new lock, the Deadbolt lock, was a misstep because it came out for seven hundred and fifty bucks, and I had to give them away to influencers uh, to get attention. Uh, this is way more in line with what they should be doing, so I'm I'm very very psyched to see this. All right, next up, we got the Prometheus Design Works Invictus SP. Now, the uh, Prometheus Design Works is uh, a, a project, a company owned by Patrick Ma, who started Triple Lot Design. And we remember the Triple Lot Design, um, what the hell was it called? The Dauntless. Uh, very cool name, by the way. Uh, the Dauntless was a project knife that Patrick Ma came out with for Triple Lot Design, which mostly designed tactical gear, like backpacks, jackets, clothes, and that kind of thing. Uh, but but they did make the a very exclusive knife called the Dauntless. And each new release of the Dauntless was designed by a, a different maker. And it, it kept certain theme, visual thematic elements to it, but then it would be the maker's take. So they had a lot of different Dauntlesses. Uh, this uh, Prometheus design Invictus uh, is based on the Dauntless. We can see some of that influence in the handle there. This knife has been around for a while. They had a Teravantium release of this. Teravantium is a, a dendritic cobalt um, alloy uh, that Prometheus Design Works came out with that does not rust at all. Um, this line is a, uh, or, or I should say this re-release is different. They're taking those contoured scales from the original Invictus and flattening them out. They still got those same grooves, but it's a much thinner blade or a much thinner handle. And now the blade is Magna Cut. The whole idea uh, behind this redesign, I'm going to read a quote from Patrick Ma, um, is, let's see, he says, originally designed to address in the waistband carry with board shorts. Uh, presumably that's sh uh, surfing, uh, surfing shorts. These are well suited for anyone who's looking for a full size technical folder in a slimmer profile. And of course, we're stoked about the first knife offering in CPM Magna Cut alloy. So uh, that's directly from um, uh, Patrick Ma. This design to put in the waistband while you're surfing. How cool is that? I love it. Uh, total adventure knife. Um, I've seen a couple of videos up there about this new release. Uh, so uh, check out some of our trusted voices. These are available now on the uh, Prometheus Design Works uh, website. The Invictus SP. Pardon me. All right, last up. In Knife Life News, you know how I love the Boker Burnley Quaken. You might hear a, a tinge of sarcasm in my voice, and 
Uh, it's half intended. I have always thought the Boker Burnley Quaken, designed by Lucas Burnley, is a beautiful knife. The part that always makes me laugh is it's endlessly reiterated. They have made the Boker Burnley Quaken in so many different versions at this point. It's uh, mind boggling. And uh, I, I I find it a fun kind of, um, you know, just hobby to dish on them, even though I think it's a great knife. I think Boker Plus makes great knives. I think... Um, uh, Lucas Burnley is a fantastic designer and just, I mean, he's a, at this point, he's a stalwart for sure. Um, but it's just kind of recreational for me to dish on them. So the new Boker Burnley Quaken, we know what a Quaken is. It's that, it's that flat back, but upswept, um, traditional Japanese style blade. Well, the Quaken is now a dagger. Yeah, that's right. It is totally symmetrical. The Quaken Sim. Uh, the only thing that's not symmetrical about this is the cutting edge. Oh, man, alive. Why won't people just put another edge on the dagger? Because it won't sell as well. Yeah, but if you're going to go into the dagger territory, how dare you not sharpen that top edge? Uh, all that said, it is beautiful. Look at this thing. Uh, as as usual, uh, Lucas Burnley pulls out a beautiful design, elegant, and actually gives a very... Nice tip of the hat to the Quaken, taking that line right up by the bolster uh, where the point is, dropping it down to the pivot and and then putting on, a, a, you know, adding a beautiful dagger blade. It, it It's all so good. It, it, it all fits in the handle so well. That's a titanium handle with titanium bolsters and G10. Why not just double edge it? So that's what I would do. If I were to get this, I would hire someone to I, I, maybe I'd send it to someone to put a double edge on it. But uh, it's goofy, but it's beautiful. It, you know, the the flagship knife for Boker, uh, in my opinion, is this knife flagship in terms of modern locking. And so why not reiterate it uh, indefinitely? This is 154 CM and uh, obviously inspired by the Italian stiletto. It is available now. If any of you get this, please let me know how you like it. Um, as much as I'd like to dislike it, uh, just for fun, I think it's pretty, pretty beautiful. Just double edge it. That's all. All right. Next up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a couple of knives. Well, five uh, that are OEM'd by guests of this show coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. No new knives uh, knives for this week. So I wanted to reflect upon an adjacent topic uh, to the main topic of the day, which is uh, amazing handmade knives by Knife Junkie podcast guests. Uh, I, I need to stipulate this is definitely a part one because at this point, Almost my entire collection is made up of knives designed by or made by guests. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure that's only about a half or three quarters of the collection. But I want to start showcasing some of these great uh, designers and makers beyond what we talk about on the show. Uh, so the first one up here in um, OEM knives by designed by guests is the Dirk Pinkerton designed asymmetrical contact. This is one of my absolute favorites and go-tos, go-to uh, EDC knives, especially during the summer. I was carrying this a lot during the summer because it is a three and a quarter inch blade. And I am not generally a three and a quarter inch blade kind of guy. I usually tend towards knives a little bit larger. Uh, but this one... I'm a an absolute sucker for Dirk Pinkerton designs. I, I love his knives. And, and this one really speaks to the things I love about it because it is definitely a great EDC knife with that 
with that Warncliffe blade and that straight edge, you could utility cut open boxes and and uh, you know work on science fair projects all day long with this thing um, and get all the utility of of a knife that approximates uh, you know, a, a utility cutter, but then you look at the handle and it's titanium. It's a frame lock. It's got that beautiful anodized clip and it's got incredible, uh, action. And then you look at how this thing would fit in your hand. If you had to, if you had to use it to defend yourself and here you look at it, you've got a point forward Pical style knife with an out, out, outreaching edge which is what you want out of this kind of self-defense knife i brought it up with dirk when he was on the show last time and uh he said yeah that's that's his intention with every knife it, he recognizes the fact that no one fights with their knife but everyone carrying a knife thinks about that as a possibility who knows and it's we're not just talking about people you could be walking your dog and you might need to defend yourself against something wild like someone else's dog or or whatever uh, the point is, you never know if you might need that knife uh, as a weapon instead of a tool or in addition to a tool. This one is a tool all day long, but if it needs to flex into a weapon, it's great. And then, of course, on the slash and the thrust, we get all the benefits of a Warncliffe that Michael Janich, uh, Michael Janich talks about uh, when he talks about the Yojimbo design. So first up, the asymmetrical contact by Dirk Pinkerton, a... Uh, exquisite designer and at this point i count him as a friend he's an awesome dude all right next up is from another awesome dude who i also count as a friend and that's uh, ben belkin of jack wolf knives we know jack wolf knives for their amazing slip joints taking traditional designs and modernizing them with materials and design tweaks for the modern day traditional knife fetishist uh however um ben after a, a full year of releasing knives and kind of going through um, a, a broad sector of the traditional uh, slip joint patterns, he doubled back to his first pattern, a clip point uh, uh, gun stock jack, and turned it into a bolster lock knife. And the reason this one makes this list is it amazed me when this came out. Sorry, I got to use the right hand. It amazed me when this came out because... He had uh, Ben Belkin had really he, he learned CAD and all that to start this company and really mastered slip joint design. And then his first outing with a front flipper locking bolster knife. My God, he nailed it. So, uh, I mean, if that's not talent, what is? And, you know, talent is nothing without hard work. I believe that 100 uh, percent. And he has both. He did both. He has the talent and he put in the hard work. And my God, this this gunslinger uh, is amazing. I, I think it's called the gunslinger jack, but I don't call it a jack because it's a it's more of a front flipper. Uh, three and a quarter inch blade, perfect in the uh, EDC realm in terms of size of knife. And then something I've neglected to speak about at all is the blade, uh, the the uh, full height hollow ground uh, uh, S ninety V blade cuts. I mean. Really, I got to be honest, I don't really ever see any need to sharpen any of my Jack Wolves. They're all uh, either M390 or S90V come super sharp, except for the Pioneer Jack, but I've gotten that super sharp. And now with those blade steels and the kind of use they get, I can't imagine ever ha having to put a new edge on any of these knives. All right, that's the Jack Wolf Gunslinger. Next up, from our good friends Kevin and Colin over at Devo Knives, is the Stout. I love the stout. I got this. I bought this from them uh, at their table at Blade Show. I should have cleaned up the blade. There's some schmutz on there. Uh, but this one I got a chance to check out when it was just a prototype. And I really fell for it because the blade reminded me at first of a Bowie and then of a Hudson River knife. It's got that uh, uh, belly of a Skinner, but sort of a clip point, just like you see on a Hudson River knife, those old traders knives from the fur traders um, in the uh, 18th and 19th centuries in Canada. Um, and I just, I think this knife is great, very tall and slicey. This one has, I don't remember the blade steel on this one, 
I think it might be 154, but they have come out with a new run of these with uh, different handle treatments, and uh, they're they're really cool. It, check out Devo knives. They're they're uh, they're just shooting shooting through the roof, man. What am I trying to say? They're they're taking off because it's a a great partnership between a great designer, Colin Maison Colin Maison Pierre, and Kevin Johnson. You know, lefty EDC, who's got such you know, knowledge about knives. And if you're only listening, that was my brain bursting. He's a very, very, very smart and knowledgeable guy with knives. Also nice and funny. And uh, so this just hits on all cylinders for me. Plus that micarta, you see that little stain? That is from a delicious pork lunch I had with my wife on a day I was playing hooky. Nothing like pork fat to patina micarta. All right, I better get moving here. I got a lot of knives to show off here. All right, this one is from... Israel Bacchus and Arcane Designs. Uh, this is a double-edged dagger. Take note. <laughs> Take note, Boker. Double-edged dagger fits perfectly in the handle. Uh, be careful. Use the quillions to shut it. But you can see how deeply recessed that dagger is. Israel Bacchus of Arcane Design has a, has a really, really great design sense. Again, retro-futuristic. I mentioned that concept with uh, Dariel Castia cast on knife early earlier definitely um pardon me definitely inspired by uh science fiction and uh, a, a sort of again retro futurism and what i mean by that is what we all thought the future would look like in the 1950s here we have a tesla coil on the clip and a riot made knife and riot i need more riot in my life i don't know if i can afford more Riot in my life, but the knives that they make are exquisite. I have two of them, this and the Riot branded K2. So Israel Bacchus, amazing designer, great guy also. And then having his knives designed, you know, designing his knives and having them made by some of the top makers out there. This one here, lastly in this list, is uh, designed by Jason Knight um, and made by Fox Knives and brought to you by Elements. Uh, tactical elements. This is the MK Ultra. God, I love this knife. This is the perfect folding kukri. Uh, I think it's even better than the Raja 2. The Raja 2, of course, can handle more. It's a bigger, uh, uh, arguably more robust knife. But in terms of taking the kukri design and translating it into a folder, this is it, baby. This is it. And uh, Jason Knight, if you know him at all from Forged in Fire or any of his custom uh, work, he is all about the kukri and and the Bowie. Like I see Bowie influence in his kukris, and this right here is is the perfect representation of his design. OEM by Fox. I love this thing. So this is a concept in a series I'd like to continue because the the knife industry is, as far as I know, unlike any other industry, enthusiast industry. My wife likes to run. But she's not sending in sneaker designs to Nike. You know, she's not sending T-shirt designs into Under Armour. Uh, so to me, there's something totally unique about the knife world because you have dorks like myself and Kevin Johnson. I'm not calling him a dork, but 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 he more like me. You know, I had one knife made, but he started a whole knife company out of his nerdiness for knives. And I absolutely love that. And that obviously is in no way a diss. Uh, I love Kev. Um, but the point is, you're not seeing that in any other industry. Okay, I think I've made my point. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show off some knives that are handmade uh, by some of the guests that have been on the Knife Junkie podcast. Now, if you know anything about the show, you've been here for a while, you know that I talk to uh, makers, designers, manufacturers, reviewers. I talk to a lot of different people on this show. Um, but the real bread and butter are the are the makers, the people making them themselves, because I like to find out how they make a go at it. How the hell do you feed your family making knives? And these guys do it. And I love it. All right, let's start. <coughs> I have very few. Pardon me. I have very few custom or handmade folders. 
As a matter of fact, that number is two, and I'm going to start with both of them. All right, first up, this is definitely a prized possession in my knife thing, in my knife collection, uh, because it is from, uh, this knife comes from a real legend. Uh, this is the Greg Lightfoot Element. Uh, this knife I had custom made by Greg Lightfoot after he came on the show. And he, I, I'm going to I'm gonna put it this way, he sensed that I couldn't really afford what he makes um, because he makes this design and many other sort of exotic designs in very exotic materials and they are beautiful and they are very expensive. Um, and I re but I really wanted a Greg Lightfoot knife. He sensed it and he said, well, at this point it's been so long. I feel like I can say this. He's like, don't tell anyone else that I'm doing this for you, but I'll make you a tactical version, a tactical version of the element. And so I stipulated I want the green micarta and all that. He gave me this, this sweet Nichols Damascus um, clip. But basically, Greg Lightfoot did me a serious solid and uh, made me one of his knives for a fraction of what he charges for, for what he's actually doing now. So this knife not only is beautiful, but it means a lot to me because this is someone extending themselves uh, to me. This thing is point eight inches thick it is thick daddy -o. i mean this thing here let, let me compare it to the here's here it is next to the devo growler <laughs> look at that it makes the the growler look like a liner here very very thin uh so this knife is a big chunker this um greg lightfoot uh was one of the first big tactical folder uh makers we can see some of his designs uh in earlier crkt um, but mostly he's been a custom maker. This recurve Tonto I fell in love with. And um, so this is definitely a prized knife. I'll never get rid of this one, um, seeing as he made it special for me. But also, I mean, how many of you folks have a Greg Lightfoot? And I don't mean it like that. Oh, I got. But, you know, there is some pride and ownership in all the things we get, whether it's a 15V um Big Brown Bear, uh, uh, a Shaman by Spyderco, or whether it's the Magna Cut Leak or or it's a Lightfoot Custom, we all take pride in ownership. And um, anyway, okay. Oh, oh, that was a very Joe Biden line. Anyway, okay. Yeah, I lose my train of thought. I'm just going to say anyway from now on. Next up is the Attention to Detail Mercantile or A2D. Mark one. This is the large. This is one of the very first folders that Douglas Esposito ever made. And it's a it's an absolutely beautiful knife. It it lacks some of what you get now in A2D, which is uh really, really buttery uh bearing action. The, like I said, this is one of his first folders, and this is on nylon washers, and I love nylon washers, uh, but when you go to his, uh, when when I go to his booth at Blade Show these days and check out his knives, which are a little bit out of reach for me, they're quite expensive, uh, but they are so good. Here's a former Marine uh, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt with a school who's making these outstanding knives, exquisite. This one here with this inlay, this natural micarta inlay, this is what got me to spend the money to buy this knife. This was all done with a panograph, uh, and and there is no flaw in the fit. The fit is absolutely perfect. Uh, second or third knife out, absolutely perfect. And he does the inlay on the lock side, too. Um, man, I, I'm very, very proud to own an early A2D mercantile uh, knife. Even with its flaws, it's got lock stick uh, and, and all that, as a matter of fact. Ah, sometimes it sticks up a lot, but I don't care. It's like this tattoo on my arm. It's uh, at this point, it's all, it's all blended in and it's all faded and, and uh, the ink has moved or whatever, but the guy who did it is a, is a legend. So I have an early <laughs> legendary uh, tattoo by that dude. I have an early legendary knife by this dude. And there's a certain pride in that ownership. Great knife. Okay, next up uh, is the TKL Knives Night Stalker. TKL, God, I've, I'm such a fan of TKL Knives. And I'm going to be totally honest right here. 
and I think it's because I've taken some uh, some cough suppressant, but I'm feeling honest. And at first, I didn't like TKL knives, and then I got one in hand. And I was like, oh my god, uh, these are great, great knives. And to me, this Night Stalker, which was a gift from Tim of Tim Kell Knives, I had bought the um, I was buying the the combatant. And he dropped this in the box. Unbeknownst to me, I showed up like two knives. He, he wanted to get this in my hand because he knew how great this knife is. And it is amazing. This is their most selling knife, the Night Stalker. Yeah, it's got a ring on it. And you know what I've said about rings in the past. But if you use it in um, saber grip or traditional grip, that ring makes a great pommel. And then in standard grip, the ring is perfectly positioned. So that you can make a fist or hold it, make a fist in your, you know, or hold it in such a way that it does not realign your knuckles and in no way. Um, so that's the big problem with rings as far as I see it. Some they're positioned in such a way that oftentimes you're 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 holding them unnaturally. This fits perfectly. And then this is one of the AEBL versions. They do a lot with ADCRV, which is a great great steel but this was a uh, stainless venture uh and then you got that uh the um the coating on there um that makes it real slick these knives are great this is probably well this is one of two favorite knives to carry uh fixed blade because this this just rides like so undetectably on the front, right where the belt buckle is. I just slide my belt buckle over uh, over to the left. I drop this right next to it. It, it, it sits flat. I can wear a t-shirt over it and you can't even see it. Uh, but then you have this super capable uh, knife. And by the way, these things are ridiculously sharp. He sh these knives, TKL knives are crazy sharp. All right, so there's that. And by the way, um, since the word is already out, um, I sent a design to Tim Kell and we're doing a collaboration knife that's going to be coming out soon. I think maybe even this month, uh, at least initially. And I'm very excited about that because I love his knives. And honestly, I think he is just such a cool person that I'm, I'm happy to be doing something with him. All right. Next up, another very cool person who's been on the show a couple of times. He was on episode uh, 375 is uh, Stroop. Chris Stroop. By, by the way, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that later. Chris Stroop. He was on episode uh, uh, 375, and then I think he came on a uh, Thursday Night Knives also. I have his, um, uh, which one? TR2 with my logo on it. That was a gift for Christmas from my wife a couple of years back. And, and then Blade Show 2022, I went with one mission to find a push dagger. And this was the one I came away with. I love this push dagger. And uh, it carries very nicely, by the by. Uh, I have this sheath with this, um, uh, with a with a horizontal clip on it. And I actually put it um, angled in the waistband, uh, clipping this to the pants, belt riding over it. And it's the perfect, perfect uh, carry. And uh, so what I was looking for in a push dagger was the asymmetrical handle where it's coming out between the, the blade is coming out between the forefinger and the middle finger, AKA the swear word finger. And uh, to me, you get more control over that blade, having it closer to the top of your hand where you're used to having a knife uh, than you do it in the center. Uh, center is great if you have a, what do they call it? Qatar uh, and you're pit fighting uh, like Conan the Barbarian. Uh, but, but if you're just carrying it in the waistband for, uh, self-defense purposes um, coming out through the through these two fingers is where it's at for me uh, this is also 80 crv a uh, very sharp chisel ground you see it flat on that side it uh, comes to quite a high peak on the front side this means it's going to leave a nasty triangular uh, wound if you have to punch someone with this because they're being a mama luke and you have to vanquish them um, but Assuming you'll never have to do that and you're just going to carry this and occasionally open a box with it or whatever. It is gorgeous, uh, beautifully done, beautifully made, beautifully designed, but also just good to go for action. For action. 
uh, you know, I haven't seen that action. Thank God. Hopefully never will. But I practice and uh, it seems like this one would draw pretty easily. Next up, another one that draws very easily and carries really nicely. This is this is my second favorite knife to carry, um, or I should say the second in my line to be a favorite to carry in front scout style behind the Night Stalker is the 302 by Aaron Bieber Knives. Aaron Bieber was on episode 432, and uh, he, he's a great guy. I met, I've been following him on Instagram uh, because of this knife, and then also a Pakal style knife he does that's actually a recurve Tonto Pakal. It's just, just beautiful. But uh, this one is my favorite of his designs. When I was walking around Blade Show setup uh, in 2022, just this past June, I saw him made a beeline. He was uh, there with John Gray. John Gray is a friend of his and a bit of a mentor, I think. And they had a uh, they were set up right next to each other. So I went over there, struck up a conversation with Aaron, uh, looked at some of his knives. And through conversation, we discovered that we both went to the same art school, uh, which was a, an immediate to me. I was like that. That's a cool bond because it was a pretty uh, serious art school. And so I, I took that into account and then looked at his blades, felt his knives in my hand and thought, here is someone who really, really understands knives, but obviously also really, really understands art. And so to have those things combined, um, you know, in one piece, felt very special to me. So I knew I had to order one of these with some swiftness. A few months later, he comes on the show and uh, we talk about this knife and all the other knives and his his knife making uh, 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 voyage, I'm going to say. And uh, I knew for my birthday knife this year, uh, I had to get one. So I got this with the white ray skin and the Sukamaki wrap. He's so good at that. Sukamaki wrap is so great for grip. That's why the samurai used it, right? You've got those alternating peaks and valleys that really capture your your uh, the fat of your palm and your fingers. And man, that it gives great grip. This knife, I almost forget I have on me. It's so light and and slender and sits so nicely on the belt. And also, it's magna cut. So yeah, not too much magna cut in the collection, but this is one of them. Okay, next up is the Kramer Custom Knives. Eric Kramer, not Bob Kramer, who makes custom kitchen knives. This is the Eric Kramer Custom Voodoo. Eric Kramer was on episode 220. Very interesting dude. And uh, started his career after Coast Guard. And he had a lot of friends in the different uh, military branches who he was making knives for. And his original thought was, like me, he's like, I grew up with Rambo and Commando and <coughs> Predator. And if you're a special operator, obviously you want something approximating a short sword because that's cool. And so he was making all these big gnarly knives for his for his friends who were requesting them. And then they would come back with feedback saying, it, this is such a great knife, but it's too damn heavy. I'm already carrying, you know, 30 pounds of ammo and, you know, 20 pounds of this and 20 pounds of that, whatever they're carrying, I need my knife to be lighter. So we started making lighter, thinner um, knives that are super robust and great for combat. Um, and this is one of them. This is the Voodoo. Now, great for combat, I say. This, is, this would be great for personal defense. Um, I had him double-edge this one. Uh, usually they're just, a, it's just a swedge on top. But nonetheless, the point is still pretty fine. So this is definitely more of a self-defense tactical uh, knife. But uh, even, even you know, because when I say combat knife, I think of utility built in there. You could definitely use that for this. But for me, this is a great EDC carry because it's nice and thin. You've got uh, micarta about the thickness as the blade. And you've got a, a sort of a broadness in the handle that makes it fit perfectly. Uh, so this this was probably one of the first uh, custom fixed blade knives that I that I purchased uh, from the maker and carried on the regular. Um, I I have not carried this in a little while, but just talking about it and having it out, uh, I need to bring it back out because uh, 
it is a great, great carry. And he makes uh, a whole host of beautiful knives. He's working on one right now, or he makes one right now that he's making a lot of that's based on the Mac V SOG. So just really awesome. Next up is a EDC dagger, which you don't see much of, and certainly not in my collection. There I have the uh, the bicycle inner tube there to keep it from moving around when it's in the waistband. But this is the auxiliary manufacturing pocket rocket, three inch dagger. Uh, the pocket rocket can be had in a couple of different blade styles. There's a Pical version of this. And then you can get a six or four inch dagger version of this knife. This is the three inch. And uh, I love this knife, uh, even though it is has a relatively straight well it's a very straight and angular handle it carries very comfortably in uh in that that appendix uh style carry i was talking about before usually you think of curves accommodating the body and the and the man's belly better but for some reason this one this one just rides up that that angle of the uh, appendix perfectly for me uh it can be drawn with a pinch of the forefinger and the knuckle because of these facets curved facets that go all the way around just an excellent handle and no matter how you grab it uh, sometimes it ends up in this position i like to call this a shovel position because it reminds me of scooping with a shovel or a shovel punch you know that sort of um, shovel punch to the gut it's sort of like an uppercut except it's going horizontally uh so this knife makes for a great great self-defense knife no doubt because of that dagger shape and this really excellent handle. It's not going anywhere, and yet you don't need a double guard. Uh, but if you're not getting in knife fights, like I usually don't, uh, this makes for a great EDC. You just got to be careful of that back edge. But the reason a double edge ma can make a great EDC is, obviously, you dull one side of that Nitro V blade, and then you can flip it over and use the other. So uh, Michael Jarvis, check out... Uh, um, uh, auxiliary manufacturing uh, you can start with episode 391 uh, and then move on from there all right next up from episode 256 uh, this is jb knife and tool uh, you probably know him if you're at all interested or you probably know them if you're at all interested in say uh, well edc fixed blade carry sure uh, but pakal style libre fighting <coughs> excuse me they make a number of knives uh, that are Libre ready. As a matter of fact, they make the official Libre fighting knife, I believe. But this is the ditch pick. Uh, so JB Knife and Tool, the pick originally was a Pical style knife of this profile. Pical meaning the edge was on that back side and this was not sharpened. So you get use of that gross motor motion like a cat. Excuse me as you um uh, as you fend off an attacker uh taking advantage of that arcing motion uh you get the point down here and the edge in here and you're penetrating and pulling penetrating and pulling and it's very very devastating this one uh is double edged so it's twice as devastating <laughs> a great edc it carries very nicely in that appendix carry uh the sort of curve and this handle accommodates the belly but you can easily reach down pinch it like this and and pull it all of the ditch models that ditch designation from jb knife and tool means it's a 16th of an inch thick the bl <laughs> the blade excuse me uh just like a cheap steak knife and they they test the toughness and of these knives and they're very tough they bend quite a bit and return to true this is 1095 blade steel and uh so that they're getting a lot of mileage out of a very thin, thin blade steel. And the idea behind that is ultra self-defense, i.e. the thinner the blade, the quicker it slices, the easier it penetrates. Okay, next up from Black Rock Knives, uh, episode 180. This is Ken Vehikite, who, man, he makes some really cool knives. Uh, but this one was the coolest to me at the time when I bought this. This is the monkey thumper. Now uh, made by Fox Knives. Fox Knives, he licensed this design to Fox. 
and uh, they make a single edge version of this without all of the cool rock patterning and stuff. But uh, here we go. Yep. This is 80 CRV hand sculpted and um, double edged here. It makes a great self-defense knife. It carries nicely and it, it, the ring also, as I mentioned in the, uh, um, with the TKL knives, that ring is right in line so I can make a fist without realigning my fingers. Uh, I do like how the the hole has a squared off um, pommel. So if you're carrying this knife, like if I use this knife in forward grip, I'm not using that ring. I'm not, I'm not big into putting my pinky through any rings. Um, but like this, it fits perfectly in my hand. And then what you have is a, an attitude adjuster over here. But if you're carrying it in that traditional karambit style in reverse grip, you have those flats to stop rotation. If you're flipping it around, doing your tricks and stuff, uh, and trying to hurt someone in a very tricky way, you can use this flat portion of the pommel to stop rotation. So I'm not even going to attempt on camera to do this because I don't want to slice myself and humiliate myself. But um, this one is very facile in the hand and uh, moves around really well. Very nicely radius on the inside. Very comfortable. Uh, but but at the end of the day, what it is here, I'm going to set it down. What it is is kind of a kukri. Because if you look at the, uh, the flat of the spine and then you look at that extreme downward plunge of the straight of this. And then you've got the rounding off of the belly. And then the point even below center line. Uh, I'd say you got kind of a kukri. Also you have a very good secondarily uh, uh, effective utility cutter because of that point orientation. So Ken Vahikite, Black Rock Knives, check out the episode. It was uh, episode 180. And uh, look at him on Instagram. He does some really, really nice stuff. Uh, all in the fixed blade tactical oeuvre over or whatever that word is okay uh next up is uh the second one from a2d this is the only repeat this was my very very first custom knife and uh, it is a beauty this is the attention to detail mercantile medium folder now this one was made in the back of douglas's uh jujitsu school when he was here in virginia he has since moved uh but i i went to visit him and pick up this knife uh, from his school and uh, it was cool it was really really great to see not only did he have a, an outstanding looking uh, jujitsu school it was big and really beautiful spot uh, but he had in the lobby a case with all the knives he had made thus far and then in the back a shop this was uh, before his folding days folder knife days and that's pretty much what he does exclusively now but his fixed blades were so gorgeous. And this is uh, a medium-sized fighter. So you see that bayonet uh, type grind. Uh, I had him sharpen it all the way uh, to, the, to the jimping there. So you got double-edged, asymmetrical in that this is uh, a less slicey on the back. It's still hollow ground, but uh, more oblique behind the edge. Here it's really thin behind the edge, hollow ground and very slicey. I love tortoise shell. He put that imitation tortoise shell over brass liners. Crowned spine on this S35VN PVD coated blade. Oh man. Uh this is one, this is one of the few knives, or I, I shouldn't put it that way. What I should say is this is one of those knives in my collection that if I had a certain if I were an assassin, you know, if my living happened to involve fighting knives, this is this would be one of them. Or uh, if I were making a movie about people who fight with knives, this would be one of them. Um, or if I were called out to a duel, this is one of three knives I would bring. All right. Second to last, this may be four knives I would bring, and this might be one of them. Uh, this is the, <coughs> excuse me, Dirk Pinkerton uh, Razorback. Dirk Pinkerton was on episode 88 and 362 awesome dude. I count him as a friend. Um, and I I'm really everything about what he does. I'm enamored with because he does really, really cool folder designs that he has. And a couple of uh, fixed blade designs that he has produced by companies like Kaiser and, uh, and, um, uh, 
concept and others and uh, but then he hand makes knives also and and sells these custom knives and they're positively beautiful i have three of his custom knives i have the fire ant double edge or triple edged i have the um, double edged pakal cave bear and then i have this razor back and yep it's sharpened all the way up to the jimping um it this is a wicked sort of uh, mash up between a Kanjar or or another curved double edged Middle Eastern blade, and the Bill Bagwell, uh, Hell's Bells Bowie, uh, it's Magna Cut or I'm sorry, L Max, and really really fine micarta, great handle, really nice ergonomics, no more than you need on that handle. This would be a hard one to disarm using that handle, but I mean, which one wouldn't? If I had a knife in my hand, you're trying to disarm it through a protruding pommel. Uh, I'd mess you up. So don't even try. <laughs> but I thought it's good to mention because really in tactical knives, you don't want too much extra hanging off anywhere. Um, so this, and by the way, this, he makes amazing Kydex sheaths. This one fits well in the three o'clock position, even uh, in jeans. And this one is uh, pretty big, though sitting down is not comfortable. All right, last up in this collection i'm sure you all know what it's going to be but yes it is the 50th birthday knife my um my hog tooth knives matt chase uh forged um loveless sub hilt folder uh this is something i uh, well it's this is a i i drew it out i didn't design it obviously bob loveless did but i drew it out kind of how i wanted it with a stag handle. I love stag. And this is my only stag fixed blade handle. I think it's my only stag handle, period. Um, and I wanted a sub hilt. And I wanted the long, slender, clip point, double-edged. And uh, this this is the result. And it's a positively beautiful piece of knife making. You can see if you look up real close. There we go. There's that pattern. He labored over this pattern and uh, showed me how he did it. It was very, very cool. Yeah, that's wicked sharp on top and on the bottom. And then he added the, uh, sculpted these beautiful quillions. This is, he does this a lot with his knives, uh, sculpts the quillions really, really beautifully. Uh, these are made from wrought iron from the Goodfellow or the Longfellow Bridge in Boston. And that's Black Micarta. So an exquisite build. This was the first and uh, heretofore last stub hilt folder that uh, Matt has made. I think it was a real learning experience and maybe a bigger pain in the ass than he expected. But he did an incredible, incredible job on it. I mentioned uh, there'd be four knives that I would go into a uh, into a duel with. Well, uh yeah, the uh, attention to detail mercantile medium folder, perhaps that last Pinkerton razor back, this knife, of course, and then the cold steel uh, Trailmaster Bowie. Those are the four that I think would be most effective. This one is just really up there, especially for the workmanship. All right, make sure that you uh, tune back in. I'm going to be doing more of this, showing off some of the amazing uh, work from the guests of this show, uh, whether it's amazing designs that have been OEM'd by very good makers or whether it's makers hand making knives that I've acquired. I want to show some of these off because these are the amazing people who make this hobby possible. All right, that just about does it for this episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Be sure to uh, join us on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show, just go here, scan the QR code, or go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Join us here tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. And then and then on next Sunday for another interview special. Actually, I have to amend that. Tomorrow night is my wife's birthday, so there's no Thursday night knives. But usually Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's what we're doing right here. Starting the weekend with Blades. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, 
comment, email them to bob at thenightjunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.